of the Ebenezer Mudgeon and the Pine Tree Riot, a dramatization of the book by Connie Evans, screenplay by Jan Lesky, directed by Ken Ken Kenhead, Kenhall, and produced by Lisa Wilkin on this, the 250th anniversary of the Ware Pine Tree Riot. This is the first production of the newly formed Ware Community Theater, dedicated to creative community involvement, and you too could get involved. Go to warecommunitytheater.com. Community theater brings together those wonderful individuals who graciously have given their time, energy, patience, and good humor. Their sacrifices are great, and they're greatly appreciated. But without them and the whole production crew, which includes Melissa, Wet Melissa Wetmore, Brian Becker, Heidi Cole, Maria Milton, Anna Lynn Austin, and Caitlin Carson, we could not be here today with this presentation for your enjoyment. A few housekeeping items. Um, if you need to go to the bathroom, You'll need to use the porta potties outside near the tennis courts because our bathrooms are uh, not in working order. Sorry about that. A note um, please note the exit signs on the south and the west side of the building. We love having the community, the whole community, with us. But to make it enjoyable for all, we ask that if you have a child that gets fussy, that you take the child outside. Thank you for that. This event is sponsored by the Ware Historical Society and has financial support from many. The following were Ebenezer Mudgett sponsors, Abel Ebenezer Brewery, Allied Auto Rucking, American Legion Post 65, Birch Hill Technology, Cold Spring RV, Hayfield Landscaping, Conconnewit Hills, Mount William Inc., Pelletier Realty Group, and the Stark House Tavern. For a full list of sponsors, please see the poster in the back of the room and look in today's booklet. of the men from Ware, New Hampshire, who had, who had dared to attack and humiliate me, the good Sheriff Whiting. Oh, 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 oh. Bailiff. Auto Redney Regis Georgie Terti. God save the king. God save the king. Save the king. <laughs> Timothy Wordley. Jonathan Wordley. Caleb Atwood. William Dustin. Abraham Johnson. Jotham Tuttle. William Quimby, Samuel Goodale, and Ebenezer Mudgett. You are charged with being rioters, crowders, disturbers of the peace, and with making an assault upon the body of Benjamin Whiting, Sheriff Whiting, that you beat, wounded, and evilly treated him, and among other injuries, and in doing so, his life was despaired of, he being an execution of his office against the peace of our Lord the King in honor and dignity. Silence! Remember, this is a court of law. If he, not, if he not give it the respect it deserves, we shall close the doors with a lot of ye on the other side. Now, how did he plead? Periodically, a good man will be forced to make a difficult choice. Driven to the brink of desperation and hopelessness, he will push beyond the boundaries of his temperament and redefine himself. We are all honorable, 
law-abiding men. Yes, we broke the law, and we took it a step further. Were we justified in our actions? You be the judge. The pine tree law was established in 1690 by King William and Queen Mary, but was not enforced until John Wentworth was appointed governor in 1760. That's 76 years. 76 years, my friends, of a law no one paid any mind to. Mm -hmm. William and Mary's law stated that any tree with a diameter larger than 24 inches belonged to the king, uh, even though that tree sits on my land. Yeah, yeah. Now the law states that any tree larger than 12 inches belongs to the king. Ridiculous. If I should cut them down for my own purposes, I would be fine. My land, my trees, we dare cut them down anyway. Yeah. 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 Only what's the trees for his navy. Yeah. Yeah. In New Hampshire, we grow massive wood <laughs> pines for the ship's masts. Portsmouth or Newburyport will pay handsomely for our trees. Yeah. They're our trees. Yeah. Exactly. And some representative of the king is going to come on my land and mark my trees with the king's broad arrow? Huh. Calm yourself, Ab. You're making a spectacle. Man is right. These pine trees feed and clothe our brood. Ebenezer, everyone knows yours will never go hungry as long as you keep making that homemade ale. And Applejack, best variety I've ever tasted. trips to Salem. For the high rum. <laughs> <laughs> spirits for the good folks. Ed, everyone likes a good sip of rum. Well, spirits are my business. I am Ebenezer Mudger. I moved to where in 1765 with my family, with my wife Miriam and children. <laughs> there were three taverns in town by then, and well, spirits has a way of turning a tidy profit. Here's how the trouble began. Let's go back to May 1771. Abraham. I suppose you could use your jacket because I could dry beans with all the chili we have. Even after this one, there's more than we can eat. Might those be the beans for the ale you've been asking for? Soon the two were stretched out, leaning up against the fence, enjoying the sunshine and passing the jug between them. Well, Jonathan said to William the other day, why would I steal your axe? As Abraham laid out another one of his detailed yarns, the two heard the sound of approaching riders. The sound made Ebenezer Mudgett's stomach drop. He knew exactly who they were and the purpose of their visit. Well, friend, it seems the governor's men have sniffed out your trees. I am Deputy John Shepard! Power of the crown! We're here to carve the broad arrow into your mask for the trees, sir! The crown! The crown be damned! You can tell the crown! Oh, don't say another word. Now, Mr. Mudgett! It would do you no good to cause trouble. I have the broadsheet right here that gives the governor, under orders from the king, the right to carve the royal mark in a tree of a certain size. What do we get from the king in return? We have no say in parliament. The governor is a mere puppet. Where is the representation for such sacrifice? Let it be, friend. Let it be. You can't argue with the crown. <coughs> So Sherburn and his men put the king's broad arrow mark on Ebenezer's trees and on many trees throughout where and surrounding towns. Soon a long standing but seldom enforced law started being enforced to the chagrin of the colonists. They've come to take possession of our trees. We all came here to make a decent living for our children. It seems we'll never get out from any, under England's control. We're better off than most. You still have a profitable business selling spiritual slippers. Miriam had a way of diffusing a bad situation, but Ebenezer's anger and resentment would not be appeased. So as the evening chores were occupying everyone else, he decided to do something about those marks in his tree. Later, he would deliver the trees to the sawmill where they waited, incriminating evidence if Sherburn decided to visit the mill. But once done, it couldn't be undone. Spring quickly melted into summer, then fall, and as it was in the winter, fall eventually gets in after an explosion of color to the 
I'm Aaron Quimby. This here's my end. First in and wear, thank you very much. Yeah. Folks come here to grab a bite. Had to talk. They don't hear much about the world outside these woods, but Eb has. Hey, Eb. Eb's come here to check on my rum supply on this cold January day. Give us his usual news about the outside world. But he's being a bit quiet today. <coughs> Must be letting this blustery newcomer have his say. Mm. So wait a minute. Are you saying we don't have a claim on our own trees? I have big plans for my trees. And I ain't about to let Georgie on the other side of the ocean have them. Besides, let him come himself. See if he can whip him out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Samuel, I'm telling you, that Governor Wentworth is serious. Look at this here broadsheet. Look, Samuel, it seems His Majesty has given the Governor a new title. Governor Wentworth is Surveyor of the King's Woods. <laughs> Yeah, we go wet with. Send his deputies sniffing around here a while back, cutting foolish marks on our trees, and wants us to pay a license for the rest of them. And he ain't too friendly about it either. Samuel, you do have to get that license before clearing or building anything. You could be arrested and fined if you don't. I can't understand taking a man's property right out from under it. The king's property. Yeah, right. ah, looks more like. Crow's foot to me. My wife just wants the attention of the king. Anyone might have a few extra coins in his own pocket. We all know that he hopes to find violations of the despicable law. We need our hinds. How can we make planks to build our houses? We have to build barns, meeting houses, and bridges. Like many settlers in New Hampshire, the ware farmers were not as concerned about stamp act. But the Pine Tree Act was more than a disturbance. It was like a noose cutting into their livelihood and threatening their opportunity for a foothold in the community. What's he need with all those trees anyways? Well, it takes a lot of trees to build one ship, Sam. That's why he's got his deputies like that John Sherburn. Yeah, yeah. That's John Sherburn. He's got that high, funny voice. You remember having to come out to your place last May. That's right. <laughs> Sure looks like an annoying mosquito. Why it around your head? It's Sheriff Whiting you want to watch out for. I've heard stories. Well, uh, it sure brings a mosquito. Whiting's a hard and yeah. deep sting, and he's got the full blessing of the government behind him. No more, Mr. Quimby. I need to go. Don't chop down anything, Samuel. They're bound to be here poking around. In the meantime, we're fixing to go to Salem for some bartering. You're welcome to join us. I'll have some room on my pump for your goods if you want to go. Yeah, Sammy, we'll, we'll meet down the south road to Clements Mill as soon as the sun comes up. I suppose I could trade my beaver skins. Yeah. Hey, I say we tar and feather Wentworth and Sherman. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. I say we send them bound and guide up to Quebec. Let yeah. the French out. That's right, Caleb. Yeah. I am naked to a tree and pour molasses on their head. Yes. <laughs> But Ebenezer could have joined in their blustering. He had not divulged that he had already ignored the despicable law. Either Governor Wentworth or John Sherbert would be checking the mill for a bending tree. And he considered going right to the mill to urge the log cutters to cut his trees post haste. But he still had to keep his business running. So his mind turned to the impending journey to Salem. Ebenezer had a good supply of his own ale, of course. However, the real attraction was the West Indies whip rock. Ah, uh, 30 gallon barrel to bring back the rum. And the only way to supply the rum was to make several arduous journeys a year to a distillery in Salem, Massachusetts. Animal skins! Oh, great. The trip took two weeks, and the weather in New Hampshire in January, as you know, was unpredictable. Butter, cheese, and grain. Each farmer loaded his surplus products onto his pump, a box-like sled that made winter traveling easier. <laughs> Despite the long days of travel and changeable conditions, the where farmers enjoyed making the trip to the market a community affair. Anybody? 
broken motherboard and a hatchet to put away at it. <laughs> and don't forget the mittens I made. I needed them double. Should keep your hands warmer than the last pair you had. I need a good bowl for bread bacon, because Moses dropped my other. And don't forget the calico this time. Lord knows no Miriam's going to need a new summer dress the way she scrubbed it. Don't forget the yarn and the flaxseed. And don't forget the molasses mother needs and my hair ribbon. I need ribbons too, Father. You brought me a hot night the last trip. <laughs> Don't worry, dear hearts. I've got it all written right here. Oh, well, women, you are fooling me. I suspect, dear husband, you relish the escape from a household of eight children. Watch that you don't pull out the barrels. Quit your friend, wife. I'll be home before you know it. We should make good time as long as that trail is passable. Yeah. Can you take the lead? Yes. Yeah. My team's a bit fresh. They need to follow a seasoned one that I can do. Get on, on there, Nick. Back, 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 back up. 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 No job for beans, no journey. That's, That's right, we need some music along the way. <laughs> no, William, he likes to compete with his oxen, and he usually wins. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Last time we went to Salem, the trail was wide enough so these branches didn't hit up against my hug. The road they traveled was just an old Indian path that they widened with each trip. Yep. Once they joined the logging yep. road in Gosstown, the trail widened. If we're lucky, we won't run into any northbound teams, especially in those heavily wooded sections. That's where it gets tricky. If such an unfortunate situation occurred, it often resulted in a test of will as to which team or teams would be forced to retreat whoa, to the oh, nearest possible oh. area. Whoa, whoa! Get out of the way! Sir, you cannot possibly think that we can back up or turn around easier than you. I need to hurry. I have urgent business. What do you expect us to do here, sir? There are four of us and one of you. Well, get a move on. You're holding up my official business. All the beans. Who was that? Yeah, that was that was a new deputy sheriff, John Quigley. The sheriff disappointed him. If he feels he has to be just as offensive and derisive as his boss. Uh, well, go Ted Tavern is just around that bend. We'll get a mug of hot flip and put this situation to rest. Sounds good. Come on, Jotham. Come on, we go. Come on, man. Go Ted, a well-established two-story clapboard tavern with four 16-game windows on either side of the oak door came into clear view. Tuck snorted and quickened his pace. Nip didn't have to be pulled. He smelled the hay pile high in the barn. The promise of a nice warm fire brought a smile to Ebenezer's wind in his face. Unfortunately, as he approached the tavern, after getting Nip and Tuck settled in the barn, he heard a familiar voice. Ah, I think I know you, sir. Do I not? I don't believe so. I beg to differ. You see, sir, your rent left the mark in me as deep as the one we left in your pines? You must have me mistaken for someone else. The only man that showed up here this past year was some small mousy fellow. <laughs> a girlish voice to match. That was me! <laughs> we have a problem here. I don't like disagreements. I've heard of the insolence that the governor's deputies have encountered with settlers living deep in the woods of Ware. There was one in particular that gave Mr. Sherburn more trouble than most. Would ye know this man? Benjamin White, Sheriff of the County. Your servant, sir. What is your name? Ebenezer Mudgett. Well, Ebenezer Mudgett, 
I think you better give Mr. Sherburn here an apology for your contrary behavior. You see, speaking ill to a governor's deputy is like speaking ill to the king himself. The prisons in England are full of people with such effrontery. We are far from England and her prisons. We are not bound by such laws here. Oh, we are bound by such laws as the pine tree law. I sure hope you're abided by that one, Mr. Mudgett. I would hate to see Mr. Sherburn here needed to report you. The fine and possible imprisonment would be hard on a merchant or a family man. You do have a family, I expect. They'd be quite alone for a bit. And who knows what could happen to them. A man your age surely must have a house full of children. You can even have out of this! Your behavior is indeed very boorish, Mr. Mudgett. Enough! I'll not have blood spilled and given me tavern a bad name. Get on with ye, and leave each of ye be. I know his reputation. That whiting will not soon forget this dust-up. His reputation is known throughout the county. That man is just another reason to hate the crown. It's only a matter of time until that rat Sherbert shows up at the sawmill. The king, Sherbert, and now Quigley and Whiting will make it difficult for me to relax and enjoy my flip. He was concerned. He could not forget the obvious threat that Whiting made against his family. Whether he meant it or not, Ab knew that he had to make the trip back home as soon as possible so he could be back to Miriam and the children. Ab was when he finally reached Salem, the men scattered to do their murdering. But Ebenezer was to return from that trip to Salem with more than just rough and calico. It was an invasion! Oh, I detest him! Thinking he was alone, I felt safe talking and thinking out loud. So I took my axe to those royal marks on my trees, and on the road with Quaden. What a... He was so grateful to unload all of his worries that at first he didn't notice that someone else was listening to his story. So I told him... You look as though you've traveled a great distance. Am I correct in assuming you're from the wilds of New Hampshire? If you assume correctly, I assume you are not. I feel you have reason to harbor ill will for this. Those such as I may not share your rancor for the same reason but share an equal distaste for England imposing similar restrictions upon our livelihood. If some of the pups refuse to suckle, the bitch may suffer. But she might bite them in return, or worse, devour them. Perhaps, but if all the pups refuse to suckle, she undoubtedly will suffer. It's important for all the pups to engage in making the message strong. I will take what you have said under advisement, sir. We've already had action with beneficial results. You must know that the towns and duties were repealed as a result of our efforts. We have had some success but our mother is still applying force. We should be our own nation, governed by our own, not by some removed sovereign who taxes us for the benefit of the land where the king resides and gives us no representation in return. Are you suggesting resistance, sir? We've done more than question. Here in Massachusetts, we've created a statement of colonist rights as men, Christians, and subjects. It's called the Boston Pamphlet. And Patrick Henry is leading the Sons of Liberty, a stout-hearted group of men committed to rousing the sensibilities of our mother. Resistance through agitation works. Perhaps now is time for action. Hmm? The Massachusetts spy. Isaiah Thomas is an intrepid young preacher who uses that paper to rally the cause for independence. 
His stories of British abuses have angered a great many colonists. Perhaps you'll have something for his next publication. It gets considerable circulation. You feeling all right, Ed? You look a little lost. I've got a lot on my mind, William. Like what? Perhaps it's time we do something. Let's get down to Daniel's house where we can talk. I can't say much now and I want to wait for the others. Caleb's cheeks are getting redder for eyeing the food or the one serving it. Uh, hey, my oh, cheeks are red. Oh, yeah. you're blushing, boy. <laughs> We've been pushed around too long. You remember what happened to Goat's Head and before that on the road with Quigley? We've been subjected to the royal administrator's insults and abuses. Because of the king, we are slowly losing what we have worked so hard to build. And our families are going to suffer for it. the pine tree law. All laws and taxes without representation are unjust. We have no say in this. We pay, and England gives us nothing. They known, just take from us. We've known about this for a long time. Why are you hot under the collar now? This has been uniting the colonies and their shared concerns. The Sons of Liberty is a secret organization that has made the Crown listen. Resistance with agitation works. But there are a lot more people in Massachusetts who can organize. How do you expect us to do that? I mean, we're scattered and isolated in the woods of where. Tis a fine afternoon. Are you in need of some help? Benjamin Whiting, Sheriff of the County, your servant, mistress. It's a cold day, Mistress Mudge. I'm in want of a warm drink before I can stop. Oh, surely you'd be more comfortable across the way to Quimby's Inn. They have a continuous loggerhead warming up some flip. We only have some cider. Sir, please, I really must insist. If we continue to meet, share our concerns, and reach out to others, we will get stronger. We will grow. We have to be able to resist. Otherwise, our families aren't going to survive as the king puts more restrictions on us. What is it you want with us, sir? You mentioned cider, did you not? Certainly. The cider's already hot. It will only take a minute. Why is he here? Does he know Papa? Surely he's just tired and cold, so he'll have his cider and be on his way. Ezra, did you finish bringing in the wood? We'll be back directly. <coughs> I gotta leave early and get down to the sawmill. I hacked out some of those royal marks on those trees I felled. Now, I know it was foolish. I know it won't protect me, it could cause me a greater fine. I could even go to prison. Now, after I get them sawed, I need to hide them so they won't confiscate and make me pay. Then I want to meet with Abraham and the others. You're the one that warned me not to cut down my pines. And ye destroyed the king's broad arrow on them? Y'all, 
You're all are guilty. Yeah, yeah. How do you know my good husband? <laughs> good? Mistress Mudgeon, your husband <laughs> threatened my very person. His insolence towards the king will not be tolerated. Surely you must be mistaken. My good husband is a law abiding man. He's a well-respected leader in this town. People seek his counsel. He was constable. Good day, children. Mr. Smudget, be sure to tell Mr. Mudgett I came to call on you. Good day. Well, I'm not going to let this interfere with my fun here. Uh, I'm going to stay till tomorrow, and then I'll head home. Sherman has a lot of towns to cover before he gets to where. Not much chance he's going to be there that soon. Well, what do you men think? Well, I see no hurry. Now, I'm not saying we don't have to be careful about our walks, but I'm not rushing back while I still have business here. And as far as resistance goes, Ed, I'm not sure what you mean by it, or what we could do. Me neither. We can't take over the British soldiers. I'm just saying keep yourselves ready in case the situation presents itself. Keep your ears open and be ready to show support if needed. What do you mean a situation presents itself? I don't know, William. Just, just wait. Stay ready. Mother, what's that all up? You think father's all right? He frightened me, Mother. Oh, no need to fret. Surely, surely she would have said if father wasn't fine. Well, Sheriff Whiting spent the evening across from Ebenezer's house at Quibby's Inn, smiling like a man who had accomplished his mission. The men of Wary arrested their meal in an uncomfortable silence. And the next morning, Ebenezer set off for home alone. Get him there, Dip. Sir? We should be our own nation. A man your age surely must have a house full of children. They'd be quite alone for a bit. You're the one that warned me not to cut down my pines, and you destroyed the king's broad arrow on them. I'd hate to see Mr. Sherburne here needing to report you. The fine and possible imprisonment would be hard on a merchant. Or a family man. <laughs> what do you think we should do here? Shoot him? Perhaps now is time for action. Mm -hmm. How do you expect us to do it? Oh, Ebenezer, you aren't fooling me. I suspect your husband, you relish the escape from a household of eight children. Whoa! <laughs> oh. That's us. Oh, now what do we do? Could you help me? I've got oh. myself into a bit of a pickle here. Well, well. Bloody hands, I see. A man with bloody hands must have been up to nothing good. I believe we met on this same road less than a fortnight ago. You've got yourself a nice bit of rum here, looks like. You could just help me back up on my seat. The, the thing is, I'm, I'm just very thirsty. This long ride has dried my throat. Hey, leave that be! Hey, I've got people waiting for that drink. Oh. I demand payment for that rum. receiving a grand homecoming win. Hey, neighbor, did you lose the rest of your party? 
Timothy, hello. The other by the other man will be here in a day or so. Caleb's working hard to get you a fine price for your leathers. Are, are you feeling well? It looks like you met a bear on the trail. You can say that and not lie. Timothy, I need you to help me spread the word. We need to have a meeting. Hmm. Sure, friend, I can let it be known. It sounds dire, but what should I say? Just say justice. It was a welcome sight for Ebenezer to see smoke rising from his chimney, twirling and twisting as it Whoa. went into his home. Papa didn't forget! I've got some sweets! Children, touch your cups! It's freezing! Did you get me the ribbon tie? How could I forget you? And the knife, Papa? Yes, yes. It appears your journey may not have been without some difficulty, Ebenezer. Just a minor inconvenience, dear. You can see them all in one piece. The weather wasn't so bad as to take it up the full two weeks. I thought a wildcat had you for supper. Just about. Just about. We had a visitor the other day, husband. Did he come here? Did he vex you and the children? I didn't he was me. Like the sheriff came here. He frightened me and the children. He came here to intimidate me through you. I didn't hurt him. I wanted to. But Finally, I didn't. I've told her that he defied the law. And about his run-ins with Whiting, Quigley, and Sherburn, and he told her what he learned from the stranger in Massachusetts. The law is unjust. We have no means to pursue our disfavor of it. We must take a stand. Uh, tears at my guts. I know you well, husband. We'll make the right decision in how to handle this. That is my perplexity. There is no right to this wrong. Mudges. A pleasure to see you again, sir. What brings you here to Plymouth Sawmill today? I am here at the pleasure of the king to inspect and record the timber on this here property. That's 270 logs, sir. <laughs> I do not need to tell you, sir, that you have disobeyed me. Eat it. You should know, sir, to look in the New Hampshire Gazette for the time and date to appear in court. Uh. On February 5th, 1772, the New Hampshire Gazette published a citation. May I read it for you? All persons claiming property in the following white pine logs seized by the order of the Surveyor General of Goffstown and where? In the province of New Hampshire may appear in court of vice admiralty to be held in Portsmouth on Thursday the 27th, instant at 10 of the clock a.m. and show cause why the same should not be forfeited, agreeable to all information filed in said court. 270 white pine logs from Clements Mill in Ware. So, here we have it. What is our recourse now, friend? We're to go on the 27th to defend ourselves. Did you not hear the man? Well, either one will not be paying a shilling to the king. Uh, any rub? Serious talk always goes better with rub. <laughs> oh. Samuel, he was innocent here as Jesse and Ezra hiding in the back. Have you come to help, hinder, or loot? I figured, had I been able to, my logs would be right there with yours. <laughs> Perhaps I can help in some fashion. Samuel, have a seat. Sit down. Well, as you all know, we've been excited to come to Portsmouth to show cause why we should not forfeit our trees and pay the fine. And as you all know, King George himself will pardon us and give us extra shillings for our trouble. <laughs> well, I for one am not giving my logs happen over to the king. A fig for the law. We're with you, Edward. Oh, oh, why don't we see what we can do? England has tied our hands in this matter. We have been away from our families long enough, having just returned from Salem. And I do not relish the journey to and fro, just to get myself told that I'm going to be fine. Yeah. Do we just sit here then and wait for Whitey to round us up? Why not send somebody in your place? And the group did just that. They sent Samuel Blodgett of Goffstown. And it wasn't long before it's there was a response. Let and what a papa, who's it from? Sam Blodgett. 
blasted, mealy-mouthed, chuckle-headed scalawag? He betrayed us! The late seizure of the white pine logs. His Excellency thought fit to deputize him? They say the charges are very <coughs> serious. They call you notorious offenders. Yeah, obstinate and notorious offenders are we. That wretch, he was supposed to represent us. Oh, the turncoat. Why? We know how. It was the silver that stacked in front of him swaying him. Yeah. We wanted to think that he could say something to get us out of it. Look, I'm not saying he's in churlish for turning on us, but the truth is, our gripe isn't with Blodgett. It's with who it's always been. The governor and the king. Yeah. Right. Ebenezer is right. What we need to do is plan our course of action. No action. What? We will resist. But no action is indeed action. Yeah, you, you can't be serious. They'll call us off and chuck us in jail. If we pay, the outrage will continue. We'll never get rid of this pine tree law. The opportunity is now, not just for ourselves, but for our families as well. They did it in Massachusetts. We can do it in where. I, for one, have grown weary of being indebted to anyone, especially the crown. I'm standing by you, Ab. I'll do nothing, just like Pete. We need to do this together. We have no means to negotiate. We have to be united in this. Well, count me in. This law's been on my wick long enough. I won't be paying. Right, yeah. right, right. The men decided to visit the area sawmills in an attempt to gather some work. But in the end, all but eight men from Clement's sawmill appeared before Samuel Blodgett the fine and were free to take their white pine law. Governor Wet was declared they had gotten off easy. The February snow and ice gave way to the March mud, and eventually the soft April bruises. The men of Ware became more and more anxious. Their defiance would not be ignored for long. The dawning of each day brought them closer to the inevitable confrontation. Resistance through agitation works. Ezra's 12. Almost a man. We should be our own nation. Jessie's taking up some of the huntmen. Though Sarah complains she's got a stitch as good as any. Perhaps now is time for action. Hmm? And with Claire's help with the baby and little Miriam sprouting so fast, we'd be fine. Dear God, how can I put my family in jeopardy? Lolo, Lolo, that man is back. They're tying up their horses now. I have besought with the vision of a family of mice startled by a predator scurrying around the circles of certain little time. <laughs> Sir, I have in my hand a warrant for your arrest. Ye have most egregiously disobeyed our majesty. King George! <laughs> you want to bid your family farewell and come with us. It is late. We will not make the journey by nightfall. I have the right to post bail, do I not? I will gather the money tonight and meet you in the morrow with the bail. I told you to be ready for, to leave for where by noon. It is out of my most liberal generosity that I shall agree to your proposal. Mark me, I expect to see the entire bail as listed in this warrant, <laughs> sir. We shall be waiting for you at Quiggy's Inn. The word about wedding visits spread quickly, and soon the men of Ware crowded the mother's house once more. I have bail I can give! Me too! No! No! I'm done with it all. I will pay the bail and summon the fate in due time. <coughs> Go home to your families and tell them about this matter. I will surrender and pay the consequences. Fred, look, you have you've disappointed us. What's the matter with you? Where's the fearless man who encouraged us to resist and said he would not pay one shilling? Are you forgetting the injustice of the pine tree law and the king's control over our livelihood? That's correct. You told us to buy our time, the chance will present itself. Well, that doesn't get any better than this. Look around you, Ebenezer. We're not turning our backs on you. We come to lend you support. Well, if you are indeed with me, that his choice is made, King George will soon realize that the good people of Ware, New Hampshire, will not tolerate his oppression any longer. 
be advised. This is tyranny. This is treason as well. We are going up against the crown. But he sent a like-minded message to call this everywhere. Our defiance is not a win. Our defiance is the result of an unjust law that has been repugnant from the start. Whatever we choose to do must be scandalous enough to hasten its gossip through the other town. The more flagrant the act, the wider it will spread. <laughs> they call us notorious offenders. So we shall do something notorious! <laughs> Periodically, a good man will be forced to make a difficult choice. Driven to the brink of desperation and hopelessness, he will push beyond the boundaries of his temperament and redefine himself. Just before dawn, on April 14, 1772, Ebenezer stood outside for his bed, trembling slightly from the cold air in anticipation. The pan was to meet at the end at sunrise take Sheriff Ben Whiting and his deputy John Quigley by surprise. The sheriff had been lost in a deep and satisfying sleep when ten men charged into the room. The bold 
old men, led by Ebenezer Mudgett, a liquor merchant from a small town in New Hampshire, helped to weave the fabric that became the spirit of America, man's desire to control his own destiny. Like a quilt pieced together from bits of cloth, daring men helped to establish independence. They rose up against injustice, oppression, and lack of representation in the British Parliament to achieve the change they needed. Without resistance, change could not occur. 